Every year, a handful of hitters take a leap forward, producing better numbers and ultimately breaking out. But the question I'm sure you're wondering is, who will that be in 2024? Well, it looks like you came to the right place because in this video, I'll be covering eight MLB hitters that I think will take the next step this season, fulfilling the term of a breakout. Starting us off, the first breakout I have for this upcoming season is St. Louis Cardinals outfielder Lars Newbar, who is entering his age 26 season. Newbar has been a steady major leaguer for back-to-back -back years now, posting consecutive 14 homer seasons in under 115 games. He also took a leap in the batting average department last year, hitting 261 after hitting 228 a year prior. It was reported that this past offseason, New worked on his swing with Nolan Arenado in an attempt to hit more fly balls to the pole side. This is obviously a massive development as we could be witnessing a power surge from Newbar that could allow him to reach the 20 homer plateau for the first time in his career. Lars has always had elite play discipline with a walk rate near 15%, so any added power could be a major difference maker in his profile. I'm expecting a season with 25 homers and average between 260 to 270 with an on-base percentage around 100 points higher, which would easily make him a clear breakout. Add in the fact that he's hitting third for the cards between Goldschmidt and Arenado and the breakout becomes much more realistic to envision. Moving on to the next breakout now, I have Vinny Pasquantino from the Kansas City Royals. The big slugging first baseman suffered unfortunate injuries last season that limited him to only 60 games, but let's not forget what kind of rare talent we have here with Pasquantino though. This is a guy who hits for steady power, rarely strikes out, and hits for average as a result. At first base, that's essentially non-heard of. Let me quickly remind you that his final season in the minors saw him hit for a full season pace of 40 homers and 150 RBIs, and yes, I said that correctly. Having only played 130 major league games over the past two years has now made him go under the radar, but I think this is the season where he stays healthy and puts it all together. If he can manage to play over 140 games, I think 30 homers and 90 RBIs to go along with a 2 average is completely in the cards and would make him one of the better first basemen in the league. With the Royals lineup quickly improving with the likes of Bobby Wood Jr. and MJ Melendez, it could help the chances of a breakout coming true for him. Moving on to the next breakout, we head to the catcher position in the Houston Astros specifically, where we have Yanier Diaz entering his age 25 sophomore season. Simply put, Diaz flat out rakes, which is evident by the 23 homers and 282 average he put up in just 104 games last year. Now you might be thinking, aren't those numbers I just listed technically a breakout? Well, what if I told you that I think he's even going to get better this year? While Diaz will never give you elite speed or elite plate discipline, his power and contact combo has the ability to become among the best at the position. His swing allows him to maximize his power, making 30 plus homers a realistic expectation going forward without sacrificing average for it. He may not take a significant jump from the 280 he hit last year, but around 290 is more than possible and when you combine that with 30 homers from a position that doesn't typically receive much in the way of offense, that classifies as a breakout to me. Oh, and he's hitting right behind Kyle Tucker to make matters even better. Staying at the catcher position, we move to former top prospect Francisco Alvarez of the New York Mets. It wasn't long ago that Alvarez was one of the top prospects in baseball with a hype that honestly was unmatched at the time. He proceeded to play in 123 games and was underwhelming relative to expectations, producing 25 homers and a 209 batting average with defense that was suspect at times. While the power was as advertised, he wasn't able to consistently barrel the baseball and collect base hits at the rate he did in the minors. When looking at the numbers more closely though, it's clear that he faced some extremely bad luck with a 222 batting average on balls in play. His strikeout rate was also fine, so it means that we should expect the average to climb a fair amount this year. Something along the lines of 30 homers, 90 RBIs, and an average hovering close to 240 is what I'm thinking, which would provide the Mets with a ton of offense from the catcher position. This will be the year that Alvarez lives up to the prospect pedigree he had in the past. Now we head back to Kansas City for our next breakout, second year shortstop Mikael Garcia. Garcia's skill set is very different from the other players I've mentioned so far, as he's a slap inning speedster for the most part. In 2023, he hit four homers, four triples, had a 272 average in 123 games played. The most impressive part was his 23 stolen bases and his ability to be a difference maker in various ways on the base pass that would lead to runs. Now, what I believe to be the difference for Garcia breaking out or not is simply a spot in the order. As of this second, he's projected to hit ninth, but if MJ Melendez falters at the leadoff spot, which I think he will, Garcia could claim the position rather quickly. 
If that ends up happening, we could seriously see Garcia steal over 40 bags with 10 to 15 homers, signaling a complete breakout and one that the Royals so badly need. He's still just 23 years old, and his minor numbers suggest that more is in store for the sophomore. Kauffman Stadium may not help his cause from a power perspective, but expect a whole bunch of triples in the gaps. Moving on to breakout hitter number 6, I'm going to Pirates third baseman Key Brian Hayes. Looking at his number the past season, Hayes posted 15 homers, 10 stolen bases, and a 271 average in only 124 games. While those are respectable numbers, they are far from what was expected from Hayes and his development. What's interesting though is that Hayes' first half and second half splits were drastically different. In the first half, he played 75 games and hit only 5 homers to go along with the 252 batting average. Comparing that with the second half in which he played only 48 games and hit 10 homers, paired with a 299 batting average and it's clear that something had changed for him. The reason for him being on my breakout radar is because shortly after the All-Star break last year, it was noted that Hayes implemented a toe tap before his swing, which he al said allowed him to time the ball much easier. He was able to finally sit back and wait on pitches with more time for him to react to them. The switch also helped him to make significantly harder contact than he did in the first half, contributing to the improved results. If these adjustments translate to 2024, adding to his already elite defense, watch out for the Hayes breakout this season. Now we move to the friendly confines of Coors Field in Colorado where we have second year hitter Ezekiel Tovar of the Rockies. Let's state the obvious here though, any young hitter that plays half his games at Coors has the opportunity to break out given how hitter friendly the park really is. Add in the impressive skill set that Tovar possesses and it's easy to foresee a breakout season for him this year. Last season, in 153 games, Tovar posted 15 homers, 11 stolen bases, and a 253 batting average. His two faults at the plate were his high strikeout rate paired with his inability to walk consistently. While these two areas are critical to becoming a better hitter, it's not unusual for a hitter to become swing happy during his rookie season. Tovar's numbers in the minors suggest to me that we should see an improvement in his strikeout rate as it was never high in AA or AAA and his walk rate should increase some as well. If he can even just marginally improve in these two spots, I think a season of 20 homers, 20 steals, and a 270 average is a total possibility and one that would see him take that next step as a major league hitter. He has the talent to do so, it's clear that he just needs to be a little more patient in his approach at the plate. And ending it off, the final breakout on this list is last but certainly not least, we move back to the Pittsburgh Pirates, but this time we look at polarizing shortstop O'Neill Cruz. It's no secret that Cruz may get a little too much hype based on his godly raw skills, but if he can piece them all together, we could be witnessing more than just a breakout in 2024. Cruz got off to a blazing hot start last year, but was quickly shut down after suffering an injury just 9 games into the season. The reality is that we really just don't know what O'Neill Cruz looks like at the highest level just yet. What we do know though is that he has massive power and speed with an arm strength that is second to none. Those are the intangibles that could very easily make him a breakout for this season. While it's difficult to make a numbers projection for Cruz due to his lack of a track record thus far, I think something along the lines of 35 homers and 25 steals is completely within reason. If he can even just hit 250 with a league average walk rate, I think he has the potential to be the best breakout on this entire list. He just has to manage to stay healthy in order for it to become a reality. And with that being said, that wraps up my breakout hitters heading into the 2024 season. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Yet again, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.